All right, hello there, guys. Um, sorry I wasn't able to be here, but I had to go take Charlotte to an appointment. Um, <clears throat> today's lesson is not very complicated, so it should be easy to learn on your own. Also, remember this video will be posted on Canvas, as will the notes, so please make sure that if you miss something in class, you go there to uh, watch it again and get help. Okay, the first thing we're going to start with is some definitions. So there's a little tiny piece of paper that you have. Um, and it defines parallel, perpendicular, skew, and then parallel planes. So parallel lines are lines that are in the same plane that never intersect. So they run right next to each other, one right next to the other. Okay, so they will look kind of like this. So you have this one here and that one there. And they run next to each other. And then if lines are going to be parallel they're going to put arrows on them for you like in the middle of the line to show that they're parallel okay perpendicular lines they're lines that are in the same plane and they intersect to form right angles so when we have perpendicular lines we see like a cross or a t and they've got that box and that means it's a right angle okay skew lines are lines that are in different planes and do not intersect okay um, so that's going to be best shown over here on our examples. So we'll get to like a picture of skew lines here in a minute. And then same thing with parallel planes. There are two planes, but they don't ever intersect. So like the floor in the ceiling of the classroom, that would be an example of parallel planes. So let's go to our first set of examples over here. So this should be one half sheet that you guys have. Um, it's the white half sheet. It says name segments parallel to segment AB. So here is AB and using different colors is going to help you guys. So if you got a couple of colors, get those out. Um, you'll need at least two for the lesson. So let me pause. You should be getting two colors. Okay, so parallel to AB. So here's AB. Now parallel means it's going to run in the same direction as AB and never ever cross it. So parallel ones would be CD. Okay, also GH. And then finally FE. So those would be parallel to AB. Okay. Next one, it says name the segments that are perpendicular to EF. So I'm going to change colors really quick. So EF, that's down here on the bottom. Okay, now perpendicular means it's going to be making a right angle. And this is a rectangular prism, so everything that's going to intersect EF is going to be at a right angle. So EH is perpendicular to it. Okay, also we have AE because it's going to intersect there at E. So AE. And then back here we have BF. And then to the back we have GF. So those are the segments that are perpendicular to GF. Okay, now it says name a pair of skewed lines. So skewed lines. There are two lines on this cube or rectangular prism that they're going to be on different faces basically and so they're never going to intersect. So I'm just going to erase so we can see it a little bit better. So GH, a line that is skewed to GH is going to be AD. So GH and AD, they're on different like sides, different faces of this rectangular prism and GH is going to keep on going like this forever and AD is going to keep on going like this forever and since like AD is higher up than GH, they're never going to cross. So that is a pair of skewed lines. So AD and GH. Okay, a second pair, we'll do another one just so we can see. A second pair could be um, AB and EH. Okay, AB and EH.
So they're basically kind of like lines on different levels, if you think of it that way. All right, and then the next part says name a pair of parallel planes. So parallel planes, they're just planes. So sides of this, whole faces of this rectangular prism. And we want parallel, so we want them to run right next to each other. So if we do the top one, okay, so plane A, B, C, D. is going to be parallel to the bottom one, plane F, G, or E, F, G, H. So your top and your bottom planes, they are parallel. It's like the top and the bottom of a box. They never meet. They run right next to each other. Okay, now to get to this stuff here, we're going to have to go to our other half sheet. Okay, so this one, again, we're going to need two different colors because we're going to be uh, labeling these angles. So up here at the top, there are different names uh, for the angles. Okay, the first one that we're going to go with is alternate interior. Okay, alternate interior angles. And these are angles that are formed by lines being cut by a transversal. Okay, lines being cut by a transversal. So the first, and they come in pairs here, so alternate interior angles. The first pair of alternate interior angles will be angles 3 and 6. So 3 and 6, okay? And angles 3 and 6 are actually congruent to each other, so I want you to color them with the same color. So anything that is the same color is going to be congruent. Okay, now we'll get our other pair of alternate interior angles, okay? And we're going to go with orange, okay? That's going to be 4 and 5. So 4 and 5. Okay? They're called alternate interior because you can see this transversal. They're on either side of the transversal, and they're also in between the two lines. So they're inside the lines, but then they're on opposite sides of that transversal. That's where that alternate comes from. Okay, so again, angle 3 is congruent to angle 6, and angle 4 is congruent to angle 5. And those are alternate interior angles. Okay, the next one we're going to get is alternate exterior angles. Okay, alternate exterior angles. So these are going to be, again, on opposite sides of this transversal, but this time they're going to be outside these parallel lines. So 1, 2, 7, and 8, those are exterior angles. Okay, so the first one, and again, use the same color here. So whatever you marked in orange, or like I marked in orange, whatever color you use there, get ready to use it right now. Okay, angle one and uh, angle eight. Okay, that is a pair of alternate exterior angles. So angle one and angle eight. Okay, and again, notice, look, 1 and 4 have the same color, 5 and 8 have the same color. So we know that those are actually congruent. Okay, now switch back to your other one. Okay, our, we have a second pair of alternate exterior angles, and that's going to be 2 and 7. So 2 and 7 are both congruent. Okay, and again, look, anything that's blue is congruent to each other, anything that's orange is congruent. So same color, same measure. All right, now we have same side interior angles. Same side interior angles. So these are going to be on the same side of the transversal, but they're going to be in between the two lines. So right here, we have 5 and 3. So 5 and 3 are a pair of same side interior. And then we have our other pair over here, 6 and 4. And what do you notice? 5 and 3, there's one orange and one blue. 6 and 4, there's one orange and one blue. Well, guess what? If they're two different colors, they add up to 180. Okay? So alternate interior angles, they are congruent to each other. Alternate exterior angles, they are congruent. Same side interior, they add up to 180. 
Okay. All right, next one, same side exterior. So again, this is the same thing. They're on the same side of the transversal, but this time they're outside. So one and seven are same side exterior, okay? And then two and eight, those are same side exterior. And again, look, one and seven, one is orange, seven is blue. Here, two and eight, two is blue, eight is orange. They're different colors, so they add up to 180, okay? And then now we've got um, the last couple ones, corresponding angles and vertical angles, okay? Corresponding angles are basically, um, you have this group of angles up here, one, two, three, four, that's one group, and then you have the second group, five, six, seven, eight. We're trying to match up the angles from the first group to their match in the second group. So angle one matches with angle five, so they are a pair of corresponding angles. Angle three matches up with angle seven. So that's another pair of corresponding angles. Angle two matches up with angle six. So that's another pair. And then finally, angle four matches up with angle eight. It's another pair of corresponding angles. And again, look, one and five, they're both orange, so they are congruent. So all corresponding angles are congruent to each other. Okay, now vertical angles. We know these, okay, vertical angles, they're congruent, okay? So let's write all the pairs. One and four, two and three, five and eight, and then six and seven. So those are my pairs of vertical angles. So again, the main thing here, guys, you need to know the names, okay? Understand the names, and then also, uh, Kind of notice the pattern here, okay? The colors, they kind of like make a little like squiggle as you go through it. So like notice that pattern, okay? Um, if you can color in the diagrams, you can easily remember whether they're congruent or whether they're equal to 180. So if you have an orange one plus a blue one, Okay, orange plus blue equals 180. That's the main thing you gotta know. If they're the same color, then they are congruent. Okay, but if there's one of each, then they're adding up to 180. So that's the main thing. So let's go to our examples. Okay, um, what line is the transversal? Guys, the transversal is the line that's cutting across two of the other lines. So it has to touch two other lines. So the only one that does that is line R. Okay, name all the pairs of alternate interior angles. Okay, so they've got to be in between the lines. So we have two, three, seven, and six. And then we need them to be alternate to each other. So what's the alternate of seven? Three. So angle seven and angle three. Okay, and then what's the other one? Angle 2 and angle 6. Okay, and the next uh, one here, it says name all the pairs of alternate exterior angles. So we're on the outside, so we're looking at 1 and 8, 4 and 5. And now we need the alternate ones from each other. So 8 is alternate from 4, so 8 and 4. Okay, and then 1 and 5. Those are your alternate exterior. Okay, name all the sides, or name all the pairs of same side interior. So again, we're on the inside, but this time we're staying on the same side of the transversal. So two and three are on the same side together. And then seven and six are on the same side together. So those are same side interior. Okay, and then the last couple ones, it says name all the pairs of same side exterior. Okay, so we're on the outside now, but on the same side of the transversal. So 8 and 5. And then 1 and 4. Okay, and then the very last one. 
very last one here, name all the pairs of corresponding angles. And remember, there's four pairs of corresponding angles. So angle one corresponds to angle three. So one and three. Okay, two corresponds to four. Eight corresponds to six. And then seven corresponds to five. Okay, so those are all the matches. So now what you guys got to do is go to the assignment, use our definitions for parallel, perpendicular, skew, um, also all these angle names, and then just identify. Okay, today we're not worrying about whether they add up to 180 or if they're congruent on the uh, angles with the transversal, but we got to know that for later. So again, this is on Canvas. If you have questions, you need to go back and watch it again. Okay, if you don't understand still, guys, there's millions of videos on YouTube that you can look up parallel lines cut by a transversal. Okay, all these notes will be on Canvas. Make sure you've got it down. We're going to turn in the assignment. I uh, want to see you guys on Thursday. All right, bye.